Hi, my name is Margie Marvelous. I'm a two-time world bodybuilding champion, and this is how I work it. I'm gonna take you through 24 hours of my beauty and wellness routine. I started in bodybuilding in 2013. I became a pro in 2014, and in 2015, I won my first bodybuilding championship. People don't always associate bodybuilding with beauty, and that is what I feel my platform is responsible for. When people think about bodybuilding, they don't think about a beautiful woman. They think about this big, huge, rough guy. But I'm here, I'm here to show that you can do both. You can have the body, the brawn, and the beauty that you want. Good morning, it's time to get up, people. It's 3.50. I know, I know. This is the life that we lead. Welcome to my room, Allure. The reason why I get up at 4 a.m., I wanna make sure that everything is put together when I meet and greet my clients. It's really important for me to be able to come off as strong, beautiful, and feminine when you're carrying around all this muscle. One of the first things I like to do is get my super greens, right pack energy, boom, boom, super greens, half bottle of water with a little crystal light in it. Those greens sometimes can be a little strong. So, welcome to my day, people. Cheers. As I stagger to the bathroom and I use my charcoal Colgate toothpaste and use my toothbrush, brushing my teeth away, hoping that it, I could just get a couple more winks of sleep. And then I look up and I'm just saying like, what am I about to do to this face? And it needs moisturizer. When I do immediately come out the shower, I use my facial moisturizing lotion. Um, SPF by Sarah Vay. This Vegas heat is no joke, but you should always use a moisturizer with an SPF. The next thing is my Palmer's Cocoa Butter Formula Skin Therapy, and I just spray this all over. So after I get dressed and get on my shoes and I get ready, I go into my kitchen and I make my egg white smoothie. It consists of 10 egg whites, a half a scoop of protein, coconut oil for a little NCT focus, and a little bit of nuts, Himalayan salt to taste, and a little bit of Splenda as well. It's blended for about 60 seconds in my Ninja. I put the top on, I'm ready to go. Inside the car, I'm chugging down my shake, I'm eating my almonds, and it takes me about 30 minutes to get to the gym to meet my first client. My first client is at 5 a.m. It's a lot of sacrifice that um, in bodybuilding that you do. The discipline and consistency of bodybuilding that it requires to look at an elite level, there are pros and cons to it. You know, there's things where you can end up looking great, your body looks awesome, but then you also can feel really neglectful for the people in your life. And so you can also think about, oh, I'm disciplined and I'm consistent with my bodybuilding, but you're missing out on the things that, you know, could matter to your family. Once I'm done with my first client around seven o'clock, that's when it's time for my next meal. Hey guys, it's a little bit past seven o'clock, and so now I'm home, and so you know what that means. It's coffee time. While that's making, I'm going to make my first meal, and that is bison with a little bit of black bean and some eggs. These are like my favorite fellows beans cooking three eggs. The biggest thing about bodybuilding is your nutrition. My nutrition consists of four meals and two snacks a day, totaling about 25 to 3,300 calories. Meal prep is the paramount of bodybuilding. You have to get the food in. I meal prep twice a week, a lot of fish, a lot of chicken, a lot of eggs, and vegetables. A lot of times people just think that we chew, choke, and swallow our food, that you don't have to love your food. The successful thing that I've known, make your food taste good. I vacuum seal all my food, my meal preps. I've had it for probably 10 years and it's never failed me. So when I put it in, seal it up, open it, cut it, and put it in the microwave, it's just so fresh. 
Around 10 a.m. is the time for me to train myself. I train about 20 hours a week, seven days a week. It consists of two to three times going back to the gym, back and forth each day, depending on my energy levels. Another thing that people think is that you have to stay in the gym for hours at a time. When you really normally just have to give yourself an adequate 45 minutes of high intensity training to really get the job done. Another tool for bodybuilding as far as weight training goes that I do is cryotherapy. I do my cryotherapy once a week. Now I'm going in to do my cryotherapy. The cryotherapy helps with joint pain or inflammation. If you have a problem when it comes to the movement of your body or the functionality, try a little cryotherapy. Okay, to see how cold I am right now. Red light therapy is uh, something I use probably four to five times a week. Uh, it's something that makes you feel like you're just ready to go to the gym, wherever you feel exhausted or you feel tired, you hop in that red light bed for 15, 12 minutes and you feel like a new person. What I'm seeing in the red light therapy, it makes you feel like you're just in a really warm sauna. You can feel the wind blowing. But by the time you're at 12 minutes, it's like, oh man, I'm ready to train. Like, let's do that. I promise you, you feel amazing with red light therapy. And your skin just looks, I mean, I am 42. My skin looks absolutely amazing. Tootin' horns here. So. <laughs> so here we are right here at my favorite place to be to help keep my face looking super, super nice and plump and full and feminine is my place at the Do Rose Salon. Because when you're a bodybuilder, you drop your body fat so 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 low and when you're dropping the body fat on the body the fat on the face goes away first and then you're like what do you need to do you need to see an esthetician to replump and put in those fillers so you can refeminize your face it's just going to happen you drop body fat the fat in your face is going to go too here's the before it's still gorgeous but She's gonna make it better. I go twice a year to, you know, reframe my face into a way in the shape that's similar to what it is before I start cutting for a bodybuilding competition. One of the biggest things that I would say that contributes to bodybuilding success is making sure that you know how your body moves and how your body sits at rest. And that means that you need a physical therapist or a chiropractor to look at you. So I go to a chiropractor every two weeks or so to make sure that my body is still functioning and still moving in the way it should be. So after I'm done with my cardio, my high intensity training, I go back home and it's time for me to be able to take off all these dirty sweaty clothes and hop in the shower. I'm going to first exfoliate. This is um, a little silicone scrubber and it's just to get the dead skin off just so my skin can look nice and vibrant. I shampoo my hair once a week. Kex Oil Shampoo by OGX, I love. And then of course the Argon Morocco Conditioner by OGX, and this is my Oil Belay um, Avocado Oil Body Wash. I am off to take my shower. And for a long time, I didn't understand the importance of making sure that you had great hygiene, that make sure that you moisturized your body correctly because I broke out. My first couple of years in bodybuilding, I didn't understand why my skin was acting the way it was. It was because I wasn't giving it the love and the attention that it needed. So this is my lunch. It's um, a curry chicken and I get this curry rub is very low on sugar I use to um, cook my chicken and then when I cook it I package it and vacuum seal it in an individual um, package and so here it is how I really try to bring out the femininity in bodybuilding is really wanting to make sure that people get that I am a woman and I love girly girly stuff I am always in makeup. It's just one of those things that I don't want someone to feel like they have to show, associate me with something hard and rough. One of the things that I like to do is the Kiss Foscaras, the ones that go under 
the eyelash. They are my go-to because it's just something that you use. You put the mascara on, you put the little lashes under, and you look so natural. Please don't zoom in. I'm not sure how good of a job I did, but I am very quick at it, and I do recommend it for everyone who doesn't want a big, thick, line strip on you. This is light, it's airy, and I get compliments all the time. I am a wigologist. I have five different wigs that I can wear in the gym that are already pre-styled. Help me out in the morning. I already have my clothes laid out, you know, laid right there in the chair, and I already have um, one of my wigs pre-styled. So this is already pre-styled in the bun, and I'm gonna show you what I do. and headband, voila. I love Fenty uh, foundation and their concealer. Now we're going in with my foundation because this is just a really quick foundation by Fenty Beauty. Oh, I love this foundation. So I go in with my highlight by MAC, my MAC Studio Fix. So I'm just going in there, highlight. I do the same look for my eyes. This is a little brown. I use the Born to Run Urban Decay Palette. I love this one with a little gloss. This is LA Colors High Shine Shea Butter Lip Gloss. I use the Bill Nye Chestnut. This is my Satcha Butter and Buttercup. My T zone area. Just went a little lip. I love to pull focus. That's the point of having a physique this way, is to pull focus, to make people have a conversation. You know, to make people talk. I do love nails. One thing I do not love about nails is when you go into a weight training room and you slam your nails on a weight and I broke two of them this weekend, slamming weight, hitting it, and I just said, oh my God, I had to break it off. But that's just me. People say, well, Margie, why do you have long nails? I said, you know what? A sister has to do what she has to do. The beauty is in it. Beauty is pain sometimes. I'll take this. This is warrior pain here, okay? So once it's time for me to actually do some real work and I get to be able to put on some girly clothes and everything else, I can sit down at my computer and start working my nutrition and meal plan and workout plans for my clients. That takes normally about the rest of my day around to 3.30 to 4 o'clock, making sure I get to network with them and talk with them and do their body checks. Three o'clock, I'm finished with my, my work work, my like, I have to sit down my office work, and that's the time where I pick up my son, and he comes with me to the gym to start filming my workout routines. So the first thing I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna do arms, and I'm gonna start with triceps, and I'm gonna do three sets of press down around 45 to 65 reps. And he loves to help me film for my social media um, projects and things that I wanna do for the future. You know, there are so many stereotypes and misconceptions about women's bodybuilding. One, that we're violent, we're angry, we're rough, we're hypersexualized, we're enabled to have children, we're incapable of nurturing. So there's a lot of things that today's bodybuilders are really able to show through social media that we are we have families, that we have love in our life, that we can, you know, cherish and be help to people out there in different ways. So I'm really, really thankful for the social media that we have today to be able to express that. Around five to seven o'clock, I would say that we're still in there training, finishing up a couple of things, you know, the look and lollygagging, I guess that we, you could say. After our evening training, we head home, watch our favorite show, probably say The Bachelor on Mondays and different true crime. My last meal is another egg white shake. It's another probably 10 egg whites. Depending on if I want to do something a little bit thicker, I'll stick a, two tablespoons of peanut butter, maybe a little bit of a banana. Something really, really kind of makes me feel like I'm having something good. A lot of ice, Splenda, and um, Himalayan salt is the key. 
after I rip the wig off my head of whatever I'm wearing that day, and I'm tossing whatever clothes in the corner before I have to get to wash them, I take my shower. I use a Dove cleanser. I don't, when I normally rinse, throughout the day after a training session or my cardio session, I just do a normal rinse. But then at the evening time, I normally like to use something a little bit stronger, like a Dove uh, men's wash, you know, to really be able to power through all the funk throughout the day, scrubbing extra really, really hard, getting that, you know, fresh feeling. I use one of those body scrub rags. I normally put on a big, huge t-shirt. My hair is, you know, up and nice and braided down. It's still wet, so it's still in the towel. And then I am vegged out and ready to do it at nine o'clock for another day. So now that I'm done with my nighttime mask and my face already looks so glowy, it's time to add the moisture back. So I use the Shea um, Moisture Overnight. Um, daily hydration overnight face oil. Add this, I liberally add this on. So I shine at night. Okay, we are almost time for bed. The most challenging part of my career is not taking it personal. Removing the emotion out of your, the work that you do. Because you have to love the sport for the evidence of what you put in it, not what how someone else will judge you based off of it. The most rewarding part is looking like me. It's not the money. I know a lot of times for women in women's bodybuilding, the money is really not equating to a lot right now. For a, the men's championship and the women's championship, it's 12 cent to the male dollar. So our competitions are at the same level. So you really just have to be like, this is my body and this is the reward. You really have to cherish the work that you put in. The physique is the reward. So now I've got my shake, my belly, my vitamins, my stomach, and I have my mission tomorrow to be the best me I can be in my head. And now it is 1030 and it is time to say good night. Good night, Allure. Thank you guys.